Welcome to Electronics and More. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something that is unrelated to electronics. I do have a fair number of other videos that are not electronics in nature. These two molars are third molars, also known as wisdom teeth. They were extracted from my mandible approximately 18 years ago. At the time when they were extracted, I was very friendly with the dentist, so he did allow me to keep the molars after they were cleaned. Normally you are not allowed to do that. It is considered medical waste and they bag it up and throw it in the trash. I'm going to remove this one, hold it in my hand. You can see there's actually three roots. Got the one long root here. Turn it sideways. You can see these two were kind of stuck together. And originally you could see the very tip where the nerve was coming out. It only stuck out a millimeter, but it was there. And over time it did snap off. Each one of these roots is covered in what is called the cementum. Goes all the way around. This point here all the way up is the enamel. You can see the white from right there all the way over to the top. Now the enamel is very thin where it meets the cementum which is called the cementum enamel junction at that point. But as it goes further up onto the crown of the tooth it becomes thicker, around a millimeter and a half thick. And when you get on top, over here, each one of the projections that sticks up is called a cusp. And then you have these little grooves known as fissures. Now, the cusps are much thicker, probably two millimeters, maybe two and a half millimeters thick. And in the center, it's a little thinner. Inside the tooth, the blood supply goes in through the bottom of the root all the way up. That's the blood supply along with the nerve and it goes into a part of the tooth called the pulp chamber. The pulp chamber can be approximated by looking at the molar and it would be somewhere around there to there over and in. It's a rectangular region looking at the tooth and what I'm going to do after we're done looking at this tooth I'm going to take my high-speed handpiece using a pear-shaped diamond burr and we're actually going to drill into this tooth to expose the pulp chamber. The tooth is held inside of the bony socket in your jaw using little tiny ligaments or fibers called PDLs, also known as periodontal ligaments. Little tiny fibers all around the cementum connecting it to the bone. When the dentist goes to extract a tooth, what he does, he places an instrument alongside of the tooth like that. And what that tool is called, it's called an elevator. He slides it between the tooth and the bony socket, pushes down to tear up some of those ligaments and wiggles back and forth and rocks it with another tool, which grabs the whole crown until it finally removes from the bony socket. When you leave your wisdom teeth in, the biggest problem is crowding, so if your teeth were very straight like mine and these start coming in, you can have a tooth. Let me grab this one here. The second molar would be here, and the third molar, or the wisdom tooth, can start erupting through the gum and pushing on the second molar. And what it does, it could throw all of your teeth out of alignment and cause big problems, which is why I removed my wisdom teeth. Some people also have issues with their teeth where the enamel meets the cementum. There's an area where it doesn't meet properly and you have exposed dentin and then you have all kinds of sensitivity issues and an area which is open for decay. I did have a couple of spots like that and all a dentist would do, take the drill using what's called an inverted cone, drill out that little area that would be decayed or it's sensitive then apply a bonding agent as well as composite to seal off that area that's exposed. The enamel on a tooth is around five on the scale. We know diamonds are very, very hard at the top and we know materials like talc are very soft. The enamel on the tooth 
is rated around a 5. And when you go to have your teeth cleaned, the dentist will use pumice. Pumice has a hardness around 6, so it's a little harder than the surface of the tooth, which is required in order to be able to clean the enamel. Usually you'll see on these molars only two roots. I happen to have three. When you have a root canal, the dentist will cut open the center here to expose the pulp chamber, remove all the pulp, then using very fine tools, reaching all the way down into each one of the roots to clear away any blood supply and nerve inside. Then they clean out those channels using a disinfecting solution and seal them off before capping the tooth. The top of the pulp chamber, which is closest to the top of the tooth, is usually found at the area of that cementum enamel junction on average. So it would be right around there the top, but there are projections that stick up inside the pulp chamber called pulp horns. And those are usually towards the corners. You'd have one there, over here, and you can flip the tooth around and there'd be one over here as well as over there. So when you're drilling, you could pretty much go, let me get a little better, deeper in the center, and you could drill here too, but you have the risk of hitting those pulp horns in these areas, so drilling in the center is relatively safe. Now this other tooth, this one here, was a very big problem having it extracted you can see the roots are actually hooked. So when you go to pull it out, it's not coming out so easy. And this one actually caused a fair amount of damage inside the bony socket. I ended up getting dry socket, which is an infected area inside the bony socket. You have this throbbing, pulsing pain in your jaw, and it's not a good thing. I told the dentist, and he said, well, I can get it, I can get it. I said, what you should have done, if it was me, is cut the tooth right down that midline, right through there, and once you cut it there, then you can rock out one half the tooth, then you could have rocked out this half of the tooth to remove it from the jaw. The way it is now, it's just an anchor. It's like driving nails at opposite angles into wood and then trying to pull it straight out. It's not going to happen. I'm going to show you a close-up now of an x-ray of a tooth and point out a few more things. Once that's completed, I'm going to be drilling into the tooth. We are now looking at a dental x-ray. Over here on the left is the second premolar, and this is the first molar. This part right here, which is exposed, the crown, is part of the second molar. The molar to the right of this one would be the wisdom tooth like you see in this video. Higher density shows up as white like the enamel you can see right here, enamel over here, as well as in this area of this molar. Lighter areas are less dense. You can see the pulp chamber right here. It's kind of flat in the center. And then you have the pulp horn that rises up to around there. And this one goes to there. From the cementum enamel junction, which is right over here on the left, at that point, if you go straight across, you'll see the top of that pulp chamber is roughly in line with the cementum enamel junction. And the only parts of the chamber that stick up are the pulp horns. As you age, the inside of this chamber becomes smaller. Over here on the premolar, you can see the pulp chamber right here a little bit of the horn rising up and this goes all the way down right to the point right here it exits right there that's the nerve with the blood supply over here is the root canal on the molar going all the way down and out there and the same on this one exiting right here if you look right over here you're going to see this little black line between the tooth and the bony socket and in that space is where the PDL lies, the periodontal ligament, which is the fibers I mentioned earlier. You could see right in here, this is a spongy type of a bone and this is another type of bone, this white band 
that runs right along where the PDL is connected all the way around. Now over here, this dark spot, that is a cavity in the tooth because it's lower density, it's showing up as a dark spot, and it's a pretty common spot where the cementum and the enamel come together. I myself have a couple of composite fillings in that exact location. This is the top of the bone. If you do not floss and a lot of bacteria collects in the pocket around the tooth, over time that can result in bone loss. So the height of the bone that you see right here could actually end up way down here and then you have all the space around the tooth. You'll see the cementum exposed by your gums and you can even have a space right here between the two roots where there's no more bone. So that's why it's very important that you floss, use Listerine to kill any bacteria in your mouth to prevent that from happening. Here you can see the enamel is very very thin where it meets the cementum and it gets thicker on the side and it's also pretty thick at the top. The center here away from the cusps which are here and there is not as thick the enamel it's probably as thick as the side right over here it just appears thicker because the angle the x-ray was taken you're seeing the opposite side of the crown another spot where you get a lot of cavities is at the contact point between the crowns you might see a dark area like this show up right here or over in that area underneath the enamel you have the dentin and the pulp is in the center of the dentin. If you ever have an infection that requires a root canal, if you looked at the x-ray at the very bottom of the root tip, right over here, you would more than likely see a darkened area and that's because there's an infection along with some bone loss taking place in that area. Now let's go on to drilling into the molar. Now before I start drilling into the enamel, I just wanted to explain that the surface of the enamel is made up of little tiny rods. If you were to look at it under very high magnification using a microscope, you would see that these rods stick up side by side, very tight, perpendicular to the surface of the tooth, all the way around the crown. Let's get started. I'll be using a pear-shaped standard diamond burr. Clear that away. Okay, let's go a little further. What I want to do before I get to the pulp chamber is give you a close-up of the dentin. The dentin is the part of the tooth where you have all the sensitivity. Let me give you a closer look at that. Once I drill into the pulp chamber, I'm going to give you a close-up image to show the thickness of the enamel on the crown. Here's a better angle showing the approximation of where the pulp chamber was. I did a pretty good job finding it. And you can see right down there, there's one opening to the root. 
we slide that in. Perfect. Goes all the way down. And there's another opening here. Turn it that way so you can see it. All right. And there's another opening near the top. Rotate this way a hair. A little harder to see, but it is right over there. Right next to the other root. The next thing a dentist would do if you were having a root canal, take something that looks just like this needle, but it's a rasp, slide it all the way down to the tip of each one of these roots, clear away any pulp, any of the blood supply with the nerve. Once that's been removed, you then disinfect each one of those roots using 2% chlorhexidine gluconate, flush that out when it's all finished, and then the dentist would seal off each one of the roots. Once all the roots have been sealed off, the dentist will then cement the inside of the tooth where the pulp chamber was, reduce the size of the crown so a new crown could be cemented on top. Let me give you a close-up now showing the thickness of the enamel. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.